friends uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in this lecture we will discuss the um, concept of compatible system of uh, first order uh, partial differential equation and this uh, concept is very very useful in um, uh, finding the um, uh, so called very important method of Charpit method to sol uh, to find the complete solution of first order nonlinear PDE. So, first let us start with the compatible system. So, uh, so here you consider a general nonlinear partial differential equation of first order in uh, x y plane that is uh, f of x y z p comma q equal to 0. Here uh, we are assuming that uh, z is a function of two independent variable that is x y. So, where z is equal to z of x y and we want to find out the condition such that every solution of one is also a solution of another partial differential equation of first order given by the equation g of x y z p comma q equal to 0. So, uh, means what we want to find out? We want to find out a condition under which the uh, every solution of this equation is uh, also satisfying the solution here. And uh, in this case when uh, we say that every solution of uh, first equation is a solution of second equation, we call uh, these two equations are compatible uh, equations and uh, uh, we say that f and g are compatible to each other. Actually uh, here uh, in the definition of compatibility, uh, there are several uh, literature in which you find out uh, this definition that compatible means uh, compatible uh, partial differential equation means that every solution is common. But in some book you will find out that uh, uh, compatibility means that they have at least one solution in common. So, here uh, I will also prefer to have this uh, definition that at least they, uh, they have at least one common solution. So, it means that uh, we may say that the uh, partial differential equation f of x y z p q equal to 0 and the partial differential equation g x y z p q equal to 0 is compatible to each other if they have at least one solution in common. And once uh, we say that it, uh, they have one solution in common then uh, we just want to see that how we can find out that one uh, that uh, common solution. For that uh, we assume uh, that the uh, Jacobian of p and q. Uh, so, here we assume that if the Jacobian j equal to dever f g upon uh, uh, dever uh, p q which is uh, given as f p g p uh, uh, f q g q is non-zero. So, uh, here to find out that common solution we assume that the uh, quantity j which is nothing but Jacobian of f g with respect to p q is non-zero. Actually this condition um, enable us to uh, find out the uh, uh, solve for uh, this equation number 1 and 2 for p and q in terms of say x, y and z. Similarly, we can write q as function of x, y and z. So, it means that to find out the common solution we need to find out the expression for p and q from these two equation and once we have these uh, expression for p and q then we say that uh, we can solve equation 1 and 2 to obtain p q in terms of x y and z and let us say that p uh, expression for p is equal to phi of x y z and q is equal to psi of x y z. Now, the condition that the pair of equation 1 and 2 should be compatible then reduces to the condition that the system of equation uh, 4 should be completely integrable means uh, the equation dz equal to phi dx plus psi dy should be integrable and once we uh, say that it is integrable then we, we can find out one parameter family of solution given as f of x y uh, comma z comma p a equal to 0. So, uh, this condition number 5 uh, we can obtain from this that if z equal to z x y then you can write dz as z x dx plus z y dy and z x we are denoting as p which is given as here. So, we can write phi d x plus uh, psi d y. So, if we can integrate then we can obtain our uh, uh, integral surface like z equal to z of x y. So, what we want is that 
uh, once we uh, are able to solve equation number 1 and 2, then once we uh, able to solve 1 and 2 in terms of p and q and after obtaining the uh, expression for p and q, we put it in this equation number 5 and this if we are able to integrate this to find out our solution z equal to z x y, then we say that we are able to find out one common solution. And the solution of equation uh, 5 will be the form of f of x y z equal to a and that will contain an arbitrary uh, constant a. So, we say that this kind of a solution is one parameter family of solution here. So, here let us uh, take one example. So, example 1 show that the equation x p minus y q equal to x and x square p, uh, p plus q equal to x z are compatible to each other and hence find a one parameter family of common solution. So, first thing we want to show that if they are compatible to each other, so they must have at least one solution in common and let us find out that they have one solution in common or not. So, for that you uh, first you uh, find out the expression for uh, dever f g or dever p q and if this quantity is non-zero then only we can proceed or we can say that, that then only we can say that 6 and 7 can be solved for is, uh, for p and q. So, if you calculate this Jacobian j equal to dever f g upon dever p q and it is uh, we have already calculated and the value is coming out to be x into 1 plus x y and we say that this will be a non-zero in a suitably defined domain d. So, let us define a domain d such that x into 1 plus x y is non-zero. In that domain we can solve our equation number 6 and 7 for p and q. So, for example, I can use this uh, x p minus y q equal to x and we can simply say that x p is equal to x plus y q and p is equal to say 1 plus y q upon x. So, once we have p then you can write down this as um, x uh, this you can use q here, q here is what? q I can say that x p minus x divided by p here. So, uh, now once we have uh, the value of p here, you use equation number 7 to uh, get the value of q and once we have q, then you can uh, solve equation number, uh, uh, we can have the value of p and q like this. So, let us uh, see whether we are able to solve this equation or not. So, let us say that x p minus y q here. So, x p minus v y q equal to x here and x square p plus x square p plus q is equal to say x z. So, here we have this. So, uh, what we can do here we can multiply by y and what you will have x p plus y q equal to x and we have x square uh, y p plus y q equal to x y z. Uh, this is minus sign. Okay. So, now add these two. So, what you will get here um, we have x p plus x square y p and uh, these uh, will cancel out each other equal to x uh, plus x y z. So, we can take it uh, x common here. So, we have p 1 plus x y and here it is 1 plus y z. So, we can write p as 1 plus y z upon 1 plus x y. So, that is what we have written here 1 plus y z upon 1 plus x y. So, once we have p then you can find out q like this x into 1 plus y z uh, divided by 1 plus x y minus y q equal to x. So, we can say that uh, y q equal to x um, 1 plus y z uh, divided by 1 plus x y minus x. So, if we simplify this you will get x plus x y z divided by 1 plus x y minus x minus x square y here. So, this will be cancelled out here and here we have y q. So, now if we take y common then we what we will get this y will be cancelled out here and here. So, what you will get uh, here you will get x z uh, here I think uh, it is uh, x uh, minus x square y here. So, what you will get x z uh, minus x square upon 1 plus x y. So, here we can take out x z minus x upon 1 plus x y. So, q equal to 
uh, so here q equal to x into z minus x, x into z minus x upon 1 plus x y, so which we have written here. So, uh, so what we have uh, achieved here that since uh, Jacobian is non-zero, so we solve equation number 6 and 7 for p and q which we have uh, given that how we can solve for p and q. So, once we have p and q then our next aim is to solve this equation dz equal to p dx plus q dy and we if we see that if this is integrable then uh, we can say that equation number 6 and 7 are compatible to each other. So, uh, you just put the value of p and q then it is dz equal to 1 plus yz upon 1 plus xy dx plus x into z minus x upon 1 plus xy dy and we want to see whether it is uh, integrable or not. So, uh, here uh, you have to apply your experience and you say that here if you look at it is x into z minus x and here in uh, dx we have yz here and here also we have uh, xz here. So, we can simplify this and we can write this uh, that if you subtract dx from dz then we can write dz minus dx equal to. So, let me write it here dz minus dx equal to 1 plus yz upon 1 plus xy dx minus dx plus x z minus x divided by 1 plus x y dy and if you simplify it is 1 plus y z minus 1 minus x y divided by 1 plus x y dx plus x into z minus x upon 1 plus x y dy and if you solve this what you will get here you can take y common. So, y z minus x d of x divided by 1 plus x y plus x z minus x 1 plus x y dy. Now, you can divide by z minus x. So, here we have dz minus dx divided by z minus x and what you will have here is y dx plus x dy divided by 1 plus x y. So, here you, you got this that dz minus dx upon z minus x equal to y dx plus x dy upon 1 plus x y. Now, you can integrate this directly. In fact, you can say that it is what? d of z minus x upon z minus x and here you can write this as d of 1 plus x y divided by 1 plus x y. Now, when you integrate it then you will get what? So, ln of z minus x equal to ln of 1 plus x y plus some constant let us take this as ln c or whatever. So, here you can say that z minus x equal to c times 1 plus x y. So, that is what we have written here that z equal to x plus c times 1 plus x y and we say that uh, uh, since we are able to integrate this dz equal to p dx plus q dy then we uh, integrate means that we are able to find out the expression of z in terms of x y uh, in volume 1 uh, parameter. So, we say that this is a a common solution of both the equation and we say that this is a one parameter family of common solution and since they have one parameter uh, uh, family of common solution. So, we say that our equation f and g which we have uh, written here as x p minus y q equal to x and x square p plus q equal to x z uh, are compatible to each other because they have one family one uh, uh, parameter family of solution in common. Similarly, uh, let us uh, consider one more uh, example that uh, show that the equation p square plus q square is equal to 1 and p square plus q square x equal to p z are compatible to each other and then we want to find out a parameter family of common solution. So, here I um, uh, ask you to pro provide that Jacobian that is Dever f g upon dever p q is non zero. So, here you define f as p square plus q square minus 1 and g you can define as p square plus q square x minus p z. So, here uh, we have to calculate this quantity. So, it is what? It is f p f q g p g q. So, here you can calculate f of p, f of p is 2 p f of q is equal to 2 q 
g of p is equal to uh, here you can say that it is 2 p x minus z and g q is equal to 2 q x that is all. So, we can say that this expression is going to be what? It is 2 p and it is 2 q here it is 2 p x minus z here we have 2 q x here. So, so g q is only 2 q x. So, when you simplify this it is what 4 p q x minus 4 p q x minus for 2 q z. So, that is plus here. So, 4 p uh, 4 p q x minus uh, 4 p q x plus 2 q z. So, we can say that this uh, cancel out. So, we have 2 q z is uh, value. So, we say that this is not identically equal to 0. So, let us define a domain in a way such that this quantity will remain non-zero. So, we say that in this domain, in this domain D, we say that Jacobian is non-zero. So, it means that we can solve equation number 11 and 12 in terms of P and Q uh, as a function of x, y and z. So, here let us solve this, uh, uh, let me write it here. Here we have P square plus Q e square equal to 1 and here we have P square Q square x equal to, let me write it here it is P z. So, here we have P z. So, if you use equation number 1, then we can write x equal to P z. So, we can write P as x by z here. So, P is x by z, then you can uh, find out the value of Q from 1. So, we can write Q e square equal to 1 minus P square, that is 1 minus x square upon z square or you can say that z square minus x square under root divided by z, that is the value of q here. So, q is coming out to be under root z square minus x square upon z and p is coming out to be x by z. Here you can say that we have two value of q that is plus minus this thing. So, once we have p and q value here, now let us see that dz, dz equal to p dx plus q dy is sol, uh, integrable or not. So, let us uh, put the value of p that is x by z dx plus q is under root z square minus x square divided by z dy equal to dz. Now, here we want to show that the this equation is exactly integrable or we can say that this is written as uh, 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 d of uh, z. So, we want to say that it is written as g x y z equal to some 0. So, we want to find out the expression g x y z equal to 0. So, for that uh, you see that here you can write down z dz equal to x dx plus under root z square minus x square dy. So, uh, from you can see that I can write dz, z dz minus x dx divided by z square minus x square equal to dy. And if you again you see that it is what I can write that it is under root z square minus x square equal to dy. So, because if you integrate this, then what you will get? Uh, you will get, uh, if you differentiate this, what you will get? 1 upon 2 under root z square minus x square and when you differentiate this, it is 2z dz, uh, dz minus 2x dx. So, 2, 2 will be cancelled out and we have the expression at dz minus x dx divided by z square minus x square. So, this is, uh, is written as d of under root z square minus x square equal to dy. When you integrate, then what you will get? It is z square minus x square equal to y plus some uh, integration constant that is c. So, we can write here z square equal to x square uh, uh, plus y plus c whole square. So, that is the uh, solution you can say that you can write down the one parameter uh, family of common solution like this. So, we have obtained a solution z square plus x z square equal to x square plus y plus c whole square. And please note down here that I have taken only the plus value that is q equal to under root <coughs> z square minus x square upon z. So, here I have taken only plus value. If you can uh, take the negative sign, so I can write it here z plus minus here. So, here I will write plus minus here and here you can write plus minus here. So, you can write plus minus here. So, that is the only change when you consider 
the uh, uh, both the signs. So, we can say that here uh, we are able to find out one parameter family of common solution of uh, the equation p square plus q square equal to 1 and p square plus q square x equal to p z. So, what we have achieved here we, we uh, so by, ha by having one solution in common we say that these two equations are compatible to each other and the common solution is given by this. So, now move back to uh, our problem. Now, here uh, we wanted to give one very important remark because uh, what we have um, given as a definition of compatible uh, uh, system that, uh, that every solution of first uh, PD is a solution of second PD and vice versa. But here uh, in both the example which we have discussed uh, it is not happening. In fact, if you look at in the first problem we can verify that in first problem what is this? Uh, let us look at the first problem. First problem is this x p minus y q equal to x. Let me write it here. This is x p minus y q equal to x and the other equation is x square plus p x square uh, p plus q equal to x z. Right? So, if we want to see that here uh, this x equal to y z equal to x y plus 1 is a solution of first but not the second let us see that z equal to x y plus 1. So, if we uh, see that this will uh, satisfy the first equation but not the second you can see that um, here z x is equal to y plus 1 and z y is equal to x. So, when you put uh, in equation number 1 so x p z x so p is y plus 1 minus y q is z y that is x and when you simplify what you will get is x. So, it means that this satisfy this first p d. So, it means that z equal to x y plus 1 is a solution of first, but if you look at the second equation, second equation is what x square p is what it is y plus 1 plus q, q is uh, x here and when you simplify this it is x square y plus x square plus x and it is not equal to uh, x z, x z means x uh, z means x y plus 1. So, when you simplify it is what x square y plus x square. So, here we say that it is not uh, equal. So, it means that z equal to x y plus 1 is a solution of first p d, but not the second p d. So, it means that uh, though we have shown that they are compatible to each other in the sense that they can be solved for p and q and d z equal to p d x plus q d y is soluble and in fact integrable and we have found the one parameter family of common solution. So, we say that uh, uh, our solution uh, our definition that they are compatible to each other provided that uh, uh, every solution is common may not be uh, uh, say um, correct or may not be taken in a uh, uh, precise manner. So, uh, similarly we can uh, we, we can see one more example if you look at uh, the second example and we try to see that z equal to x plus y by root 2 is a solution of first equation, but not the second equation for that uh, look at the equation the equation is p square plus q square is equal to 1. So, let me write it here p square plus q square oh. e 1, but p square plus q square x equal to p z. So, here we want to say z equal to x plus y by root 2. So, we say that here if you calculate p is what p is 1 by root 2 q is what q is 1 by root 2 and it satisfy the first equation, but not the second equation because if you look at the second equation here it will be x equal to a 1 by root 2 and z is x plus y upon root 2. So, here you can say that these two are not equal. So, it means that this will satisfy the first equation, but not the second equation. So, here uh, we have uh, say problem in the sense that uh, there are two things. First thing is the definition and second thing, in, uh, second thing is to show that uh, the equations are compatible to each other. So, if uh, we take the definition of compatibility as that every solution of uh, first p d is a solution of second p d, then we can say that 
then the method that uh, they can be soluble for p and q and the corresponding equation dz equal to p dx plus q dy is uh, integrable. We can say that uh, if we take this definition as that every solution is common, then we say that the uh, next thing is this to is a method to find out one solution in common. Because here uh, in both the example, what we have shown is that these two equations uh, in both the example 1 and example 2, they have one solution in common. So, if we take that uh, definition as that every solution in common, so we simply say that they are not compatible to each other, uh, yet they are having one solution in common. So, it means that either we take the definition as that every solution in common and the procedure to find out one solution, uh, one common solution or we simply say that uh, the uh, compatibility means they have one solution in common. So, uh, uh, here we can uh, 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 say debate on uh, this, this thing. So, now let us uh, move uh, next because uh, what we have shown here, we have shown that given in uh, P d P uh, uh, f equal to f x y z p q equal to 0 and g x y z p q equal to 0, what we have uh, shown that they are compatible to each other provided that we can solve f and g in, uh, in terms of p q uh, as a function of x y z and d z equal to p d x plus q d y is equal to uh, uh, is integrable. But uh, uh, many a times it is not very easy to see that how we can solve. So, uh, is there any condition available by which uh, without solving uh, the two uh, PDs can we say that our uh, equations are compatible to each other. It means that uh, uh, it is ex uh, equivalent to say that we can solve f and g for p and q and d z equal to p d x plus q d y is integrable. So, now we want to find out a condition uh, in which we simply use the uh, equation of p d and by saying uh, by using the equation of p d only we say that these two equations are compatible to each other or not. So, uh, in theorem 3 we will give the uh, necessary and sufficient condition that the uh, uh, two equations are compatible and the uh, corresponding dz equal to p dx plus q dy is integrable. So, here this uh, condition is to give that dz equal to p dx plus q dy is integrable. So, basically you can consider this as that it is a integrability condition provided that Jacobian is non-zero. So, let us say that look at the equation number 5. So, we say that a necessary and sufficient condition that the equation 5 is integrable is that this bracket f g is equal to 0 where f g is written as uh, Jacobian of f g with respect to x p plus p times Jacobian of f g with respect to z p plus Jacobian of f g with respect to y q plus q times Jacobian of f g with respect to z q and if you look at the expression that should come out to be 0. If this value is coming out to be 0, then we say that this dz equal to p dx plus q dy is integrable and we can say that f x y z p q is equal to 0 and g x y z p q are compatible to each other provided that Jacobian of f comma g with respect to p and q is non-zero. So, this condition along with this uh, condition will simply say that this f and g are compatible to each other or we can say that they have at least one solution in common. So, uh, here uh, we use uh, one condition that d z equal to phi d x plus psi d y is integrable if and only if x dot curl x is equal to 0. So, this is the result which uh, we are using and you can find out this result in uh, uh, study of uh, uh, fine uh, differential equation and uh, you can see the book of Ian Sinadin uh, to get uh, to get more information about this uh, uh, condition that x dot curl x equal to 0 where x is uh, phi psi and minus 1. So, let us calculate the quantity that x dot curl x equal to 0. So, here uh, x dot curl x means this is x phi i plus psi j plus k uh, into minus 1 into curl x, uh, let us find out the curl x, this is i j k divided by divided x divided by divided y divided by divided z phi psi minus 1 and you if you simplify this 
this is coming out to be psi x plus phi psi z equal to phi y plus psi phi z. You can simplify this and you can have this value. Now, uh, psi x plus p psi z uh, equal to phi y plus q psi z. Here we are just writing phi as p and psi as q. So, we can write that our integrability condition is now reduced to 14. But if you look at this uh, condition 14, it is still given in terms of p and q. So, here we uh, if you want a condition in terms of f and g, then we have to get rid of uh, the expression phi and psi here. So, for that let us utilize the uh, equation f and g here. So, uh, since p is equal to phi x y z, uh, a and q equal to x y z a that the equation f x y z p q equal to 0 can be written as f of x y z phi psi equal to 0. Now, what we can do here to find out the value here that is psi x plus p psi z and phi y plus q psi z what we do we use the equation f and g to find out uh, this this value separately and this value separately and then equate so that we can eliminate this phi and psi and we can get a condition in terms of f and g purely. So, for that you simply dif uh, differentiate with respect to x and we have f x plus f p phi x plus f q psi x equal to 0 here. So, here we are simply assuming that x y z phi psi are uh, argument to each other and we are simply uh, uh, differentiating with respect to x provided that phi uh, is written as a function of x y z here and psi as a function of x y and z here. So, here I am not assuming that z is a function of x. So, here we are writing f x plus f p phi x plus f q psi x equal to 0 and then we again differentiate with respect to z here. So, f z plus f p phi z plus f q psi z equal to 0 and with the help of this you just multiply this equation number 17 by phi and we can get this equation number 18. Now, here uh, if you look at the equation number 18 carefully then here the term which we wanted to uh, get the phi x plus phi phi z and that is what we have written here uh, this um, uh, sorry this is uh, uh, psi x plus phi psi z. So, it is psi x plus phi uh, psi z. So, this is the value we, we can obtain from this. So, here we can get this value. Now, here if you uh, see I have uh, and when, when we differentiate with respect to x I have taken z as a uh, um, independent of x y, but if we do not uh, take uh, 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 if we take that z is a function of x and y also then uh, we can write here uh, the following thing f of x y z phi and psi equal to 0. Now, here let us assume that z is also a function of x y and see what you will get. So, in this case we have f of x plus f of z now here we have z of x and here we have f of phi phi of x uh, and here phi is a function of z. So, phi of z z of x plus f of psi and then psi of x plus um, uh, psi z and z y z x equal to 0 and if you simplify what you will get here I am writing f of x plus the z x is p p f z plus f of p and here it is what phi x is I am writing phi x plus phi z is phi z and z x is p plus f of q psi of x plus psi z and this is q uh, z x is p. So, equal to 0 and if you look at this is the exactly the equation number 18 f x plus p phi z I am writing here f p f p phi x plus phi phi z I am writing p as phi. So, f q psi x plus phi psi z. So, it is exactly the equation number 18. So, whether you uh, do it like this that first you differentiate with respect to x keeping z as a uh, independent variable z is not depending on x and then you differentiate again with respect to z and then you uh, suitably um, uh, manage with the equation number 16 and 17 to get this equation number 18 or you assume that z is a function of x y and you simply differentiate with respect to x and to get this expression that is given as equation number 18. And the same a similar expression is uh, valid for 
equation number uh, for uh, uh, equation g x y z phi psi equal to 0. So, repeating the same process for g we have g x plus phi c uh, phi g z plus g p phi x plus phi phi z plus g q psi x plus phi psi z equal to 0. And as we said that we want to get uh, expression for this. So, what we do here we multiply by f p f p and here we multiply by g of p and then subtract. So, that this this term will be cancelled out here. So, when we do that solving the equation 18 and 19 for psi x plus phi phi z means uh, that is this thing what we uh, do here we uh, and we can get psi x plus phi psi z as follows f x g p uh, uh, minus f p g x plus phi f z g p minus f p g z divided by f p g q minus f q g p here. So, um, here uh, this quantity if you remember this quantity is the Jacobian of f g with respect to p and q. So, uh, we, uh, we are calling this quantity as j. So, we can write this as uh, this this quantity is what uh, Jacobian of f g with respect to x p I am writing here plus this Jacob, uh, this uh, is Jacobian of f g with respect to z p. So, I am writing psi x plus phi psi z is 1 upon j uh, Jacobian of f g with respect to x p plus phi times Jacobian of f g with respect to z p. So, here we are able to find out the um, the quantity psi x plus phi psi z and here Jacobian is uh, uh, we have utilized that Jacobian is non zero. So, we can uh, divide by uh, Jacobian. Now, this gives an expression for the left hand side of equation number 14 and in a similar way we can uh, differentiate f and g with respect to uh, y and z or um, when we j, uh, we assume that z is a not a function of uh, x y. But uh, we can directly differentiate f with respect to y keeping z as a function of y. Then we can uh, do the repeat uh, same procedure and we can get the value of psi y plus phi psi z and it is written as minus 1 upon Jacobian uh, minus 1 upon Jacobian uh, Jacobian of f g with respect to y q j, uh, plus phi times Jacobian of f g with respect to uh, z q uh, sorry it is uh, uh, um, uh, psi times Jacobian of f g with respect to z q and using the equation number 22 and the previous one that is 20 and equation number 14 where we equate these two. So, uh, using the expression for this and this and we can write here that using the expression given in equation number 20 and 22 into equation number 14 and replacing phi and psi by p and q respectively. We observe that the two conditions should be compatible such that f g is equal to 0. When you equate these two we have the following thing that Jacobian of f g with respect to x p plus p times Jacobian of f g with respect to z p plus Jacobian of f g with respect to y q plus q times Jacobian of f g with respect to z q is equal to 0 and this quantity we are uh, taking as bracket f g. So, we say that if bracket f g is 0 then f and g are compatible to each other and we say that suppose that equation uh, condition 21 and 23 are satisfied then we can solve equ uh, equation 1 and 2 for p and q and these uh, obtained functions satisfy the condition that p x plus q y and this implies that they exist as function z equal to z x y such that p equal to z x q equal to z y and this function is an integral of both the equation 1 and 2. So, here the bracket f g equal to 0 is an integrability condition that d z equal to p d x plus q d y is exactly uh, uh, derivative of a function z equal to z x y. And in this we have already assumed that Jacobian of f g with respect to p q is non 0. So, it means that we can uh, we are able to solve f and g with respect to p and q in terms of x y z. So, that this equation is integrable. So, this is the method of this is basically an integrability condition which which uh, uh, help us to find out one common family of solution. So, uh, with this uh, I end this lecture and in next lecture we will discuss some example based on this and um, we try to discuss a very important method that is Chapin method based on this compatibility concept. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, we will continue next lecture, thank you.